Hey everyone and welcome to the fourth episode of my LEGO Train Container Terminal Automation Project. This video will be in two parts. The first part I'm gonna explain something about the track height and the second part we're gonna actually move a container from the monorail to the train or vice versa. So let's start with the track height. The monorail system has a height of 10 studs, that's what you see here. Which is perfectly fine for monorail since they are, I don't know, 5, 6, maybe 7 studs high. So enough to pass a monorail below it. But it is not high enough for a train to pass, especially the Horizon Express which is a bit higher. So that means that you need to raise the monorail track a bit in order to pass the Horizon Express train below it. Well, there are two ways to do it. The first way is you take another ramp like this and you put it behind this one. Then you get a total height of 20 studs, which is ridiculously high. The other way is just adding some bricks or whatever below the supports. And that makes also the height that you need. I do this because the monorail system isn't flexible in height. Like you do for example with Lego trains. It's because these ramps are fixed. So you, you cannot change the height of the monorail track easily. So now I've added a few bricks below here. And that has also impact on my uh, container terminal. So let's, let's make a switch here. Voila. So I need uh, three studs extra below the uh, monorail track. So that's what I did here. I hope you can see it. Yeah, here you see it. So I raised the monorail track by three studs, but that has also consequences for the crane. Since the crane is a pneumatic system, it only can be completely up or completely down and not something in between. So that means that I need to adjust the height of the crane based on the height of the container sitting below it. So that's what I did. In the previous video I told you that I added another scissor section to the crane to get it some more reach. Well, I removed it again because after, uh, after some thinking I was like when I grab a container from the monorail and I wanted to transport it to the train wagon, it means that the train wagon is empty as well. So I don't have to lift the container all the way up above the other container or something like that. It's just, you know, this one will be empty and it's just a matter of moving it. That's it. So um, I don't need an extra height or something for the crane. I just need to clear this little edge here and that's it. All right, now that means that also the container on the train must be the same height as the container on the monorail because, you know, it's the, it's the same thing. So I built a proof of concept container wagon uh, on which sits a container and um, it turns out that I need to add four bricks uh, below the train track. Which isn't a lot, so it's, uh, it's quite doable. I could have done it also a bit easier to use a train wagon without the lowered section. So that would mean that the container would be this high, something like that. And that would save me two bricks here below the track. But I like this design more of the uh, wagon, so that's why I left it like this. Of course I can play with it later on. Um, if I want to use other wagons, it's fine. I just lower the track a bit and that's it. So no worries about that. That's it what I can tell you about the height. And now I'm going to build the actual crane. And uh, we get some uh, parts moving. And welcome back. Well, as you can see, I've already built the crane a bit in its final form. Don't look at the colors. The uh, crane will be completely red. And the moving parts will be yellow. So this is still a proof of concept. Um, what I did on top is the yellow part here can be moved now it can go alongside of the crane and now there are two ways to make sure that the um, moving part is stopped at the end where it should stop one way is using a sensor and shutting down the motor when um, the thing hits the sensor another way is making it collide to the mechanical structure over here and that's what I did I put in a clutch gear, the white gear here, that is a clutch gear. So when it collides to the mechanical structure over here, it'll stop by itself, so I can show you that. See? It doesn't go anywhere. 
And as you can see, it's now also nicely positioned above the container wagon. So I'm going to move it back now. And same counts here, it's now nicely above the monorail. So what we're going to do now is we're going to move one container from the monorail cart to the train wagon. And we're, we're going to do it manually. Maybe next time we're going to do it fully automatic. But for now we're going to do it manually. And so I can show you that the system works. At least when I tried it, it works. Of course now uh, there will be some problems, of course. It's always like that. <laughs> but we'll, uh, we'll see what happens. So let me just position this one in the right position. Um, and then we are ready to go. All right, I'm gonna switch off the compressor so we don't have the noise. And now we're gonna move the thing. So we're gonna put down the crane. Wrap container. Stops automatically. Go down again. Let go. And go up again. Et voila! That's it. Works perfectly fine. So that's uh, that's what I like to see. And that's why I also installed these uh, uh, slopes that you saw in the previous video. It's also because of this. Now it works just fine. Manually it works fine. The next step is making it automated. But there's one more step before that. And that is that we need to move the crane to that side or to that side next to the train. So it can pick, so it can pick up containers from different positions. In total three wagons. So it needs to go along three wagons to unload the full train. So there are two ways to do that. You can put a rail like I have here on top of this. You can put it also here in parallel. Or you can do it on the ground and move the whole structure. So I'm not sure yet what I'm going to do. If you have any suggestions what you think is the best option, please let me know. Because that's something, uh, I don't know. I think both options are just fine. But maybe there are some differences. Um, maybe when I do it on top it's a bit more stable. Maybe if I do it on the bottom it's a bit more stable. I don't know. Let me know what you think of it. Thank you for watching. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do so. And uh, hope to see you next time. Bye.